So today is December 13th and it is the first day of my last week of working as a UX designer in 2021. My company is actually closed for the last two weeks of the year, which is really nice because it just means that we get some undivided attention with our families and our loved ones. So around this time of year, a lot of our clients are already on holidays themselves and a lot of my coworkers are taking time off too. Anyone that's left kind of is in holiday brain or holiday mode where we're just really looking forward to spending vacation time and getting a little bit of a chance to relax. So I'm really excited to show you guys what a very quiet week looks like in the life of a UX designer. And for today, I don't really have too many big meetings or anything, but one thing that I absolutely need to do is get ready and read through a statement of work. So a statement of work or a SAL is a document that we give to our clients that explains the exact kind of work that we're going to be doing on this project. And it also includes the estimated timeline and budget for this project. I'm not exactly sure how it works at other companies, but if you get a chance to, I highly recommend that you take a look at your SAL as well. It really helps you get a good understanding of what expectations your client has for a project and what the objectives are and how you can meet them. And especially when you get into higher roles or levels of designer when it comes to your company, your project manager might ask you to take a look through the cell and kind of go over it to see if there are any gaps to be filled or any like holes in it that might make it difficult for any designer who might be working on this project. My favorite way to do this is by using the Bear app that I have installed on my Mac. Bear is a writing or a note taking application that you can install. It's for Mac users only and it's where I put a lot of my notes ahead of these meetings. Sometimes I'll even draft up my emails in here too. So sometimes when we are working on tickets, they end up needing a bit more discussion and I like to get on a call with a developer so that we can work through it together. It's just faster if we are chatting instead of waiting for messages or comments. On this project and in this ticket, we're working on trying to figure out how to handle error messages on our login screen. So I usually do this by showing Figma and we're going to work through the different states or the paths that a user would take if they were to write in their email address correctly or incorrectly on the login screen. So when doing this, we need to figure out like what's going to happen if a user were to just click on it and then leave, if they were to hover over it, and when we need to put in that check. And by check, I mean when are we going to show the error message if it's necessary to the user? Are we going to wait until after they hit the submit button or are we going to show them right after they leave a field or right after they enter the text? And what should that error message display? Right now we just have something as a placeholder that will get updated in the future. But personally, I like having the error message right underneath the input field so the user knows exactly which input field is incorrect. After we worked out the first run through about how it should work in our heads, we decided to go over it again just to make sure we got everything sorted out. And we realized that when a user hovers over a field, we shouldn't really count that as active. So we decide to change it up a little bit and just say, if they're hovering over it, nothing changes on the input field. We just update the cursor instead. We also added another case of what if the field is required? And we realized that we needed another error message to handle that. So this is what we kind of worked out so far and I'm pretty satisfied with it, but of course it still needs to be tested, which we will do at a future date. My love language is your time and attention. Won't you give some of it to me? I've been lonely lately. I've been feeling neglected, and I want you to show me 
Hey guys, um, we just finished our lunch and learn and I did my stretching during it, so it was all good. I have about 15 minutes before my statement of work meeting that I was prepping for that you guys saw yesterday. And usually for these meetings, they're really chill. It's just internal, so only people from our company and not anyone from the client side. So it's really chill, but I still get a little bit nervous because I always get nervous before any kind of meeting, honestly. But for the most part, I use my iPad to take notes. This is just an iPad Air and I use Apple Pencil. So when I take notes, I usually use the Procreate app because it's just easier for me to write and I have all of my notes and sketches and wireframes, anything that I've done in there already. So it's just nice to have it all in one place. But the other reason that I really just like having notes and not having like computer notes is because I like holding on to a pencil or a pen or anything like that because when I get nervous I get a little like fidgety and just like having something in my hand that I can fidget with that I can put like under the table so that people don't see when I'm in my meetings it makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. Once I get comfortable then I can like kind of let go of it a little bit it's like my little um safety net or a security blanket once i feel a little bit more comfortable that's when i can let it go but for now i'm just going to read over the notes that i wrote down yesterday get the document pulled up onto my computer and wait for that meeting to start won't you let me in so Do we have a main point of contact for who we can reach out to to get in touch with actual users? Well, I think because they're asking a lot when it comes to visual design, I might be bringing on a junior or an intermediate designer to help me out with designing the mock-ups. Nope, no more questions. Okay, <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you, bye. So I just finished a team social event. We had to start pretty early because we have people in different time zones. So it's only like 10 o'clock right now for me, but it was basically like an online or a virtual escape room. So we broke out into teams and then we had an hour to try to get out of this locked room. We didn't end up escaping, but it was pretty fun. I'll leave the link in the description if you guys are interested in trying it out yourself. But I really like puzzled so I had a lot of fun doing it and it kind of just makes me want to play Professor Layton or something. <laughs> So it's just after lunch and I already made my tea for my next meeting that's coming up in a few minutes. My next meeting is actually my most boring meeting of the entire week. It's a backlog grooming meeting. So this is a meeting that we have every week and it's between me, the BA lead, the product owner, the project manager, and also the development team lead. And we plan out what we're gonna do for our next week or our next sprint. And the reason that I think it's so boring is because we don't really like do anything in the meeting it's really just talking and kind of saying things that we've heard from the client or things that we've noticed in our own individual roles that would really benefit the project to to prioritize so I just finished my backlog grooming meeting and it was as normal and as boring as I thought it was going to be so I'm glad I didn't end up filming it. One of our big discussion points is that one of our clients wants a feature and they say that's like super super important that we get it in time for our first 
phase one release to them. So we had to prioritize that and then deprioritize a couple other things. But while I'm waiting for this meeting to start, it kind of makes me think about when I first joined this company and I came in as a new senior UX designer and it was my first role being a senior UX designer. So I was very nervous about like, what did they expect me to know? Do I have to know everything? I don't know. Do I have, am I going to have trouble being taken seriously? I don't know. Things like all these like doubts and stuff because I just wasn't really sure what my what my place was when I came in here. When I first started actually, I was very much like, hmm, should I message someone like and ask them if they want to work on this together? And it would take me like a few, I don't know, like a while before I actually did. But now I'm more like, oh, do you want to work on this with me? And I just like reach out to them like on Slack whenever and if they have time, that's great. But yeah, it was very awkward when I first joined. Uh, did a client ask for this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think you're on the right track here. Um, I like what you did on the other side of the table. Like in that column, you had your icon centered within the column and then you had your most high priority text on the same line as that. So I feel like if you kind of did the same thing on the other side where you're trying to fit in that expiry date, I think that'll look really nice. It'll be very symmetrical. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, I feel like with auto layout, like it works really great and it makes everything super fast when you already have like a set standard or template that you want to follow. And it usually happens when you're like finalizing your design. But when you're kind of in like the thick of it and you're just designing on the fly and stuff, it does make it a little bit difficult to help you maneuver around. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. I just finished the mentoring session and my social battery life is like done. <laughs> I've done so much talking this whole day that I just feel so tired. It's not like I don't like talking to my coworkers or I don't like solving design problems or anything like that. It's just that I get super, super tired from talking, especially since we've been working from home, like I don't really socialize very often. I do want to finish the day off with a little bit of journaling. So I started doing this because I really wanted to keep track of how I was doing in my career and what kind of progress I was making and where do I need to make a little bit more progress. I also wanted to do this because it helped me measure how happy I was at the company I was working at and if there was anything I can do or improve upon. So there's only four things that I really like keep track of in my journal when it comes to work. One is, did I help anyone today? Like, did I help another designer or did I help a dev? Two, did I learn anything? Three, am I proud of the work that I did today? And the fourth one is, did I eat lunch? So it's not really that important for me to write down exactly what I ate, but it's more important for me to know like, did I manage my time properly so that I was able to take a break? Did I make sure I was communicating my capacity or was I taking on too much or was I stuck on a problem for too long and I didn't ask for help? This week, I was able to do an internal kickoff for our project coming up in January. Yeah, I don't know. I thought this week was going to be pretty slow, but it honestly it just feels like any other week. So today's Thursday and I just finished a team meeting with the UX team. We do this every two weeks and it's basically a time where we can kind of regroup and talk about how each of our projects are going and we can bring up any kind of issues or ideas that we might have come up with throughout the last two weeks. For the rest of the day today, I'm going to be working on an audit of our current implementation for this project that I'm on. So for this project, we're at that point where the developers have created enough of the functionality where I'm able to kind of test it 
from an end-to-end -end process. A UX audit is a tool to evaluate an app or a website's user interface. I'm doing this now so that we can prepare for phase two, which is going to happen in the new year. And since this is only internal, so only people within the company are going to be able to see it, I'm going to do only the heuristic evaluation part of it. So I like doing this in Figma because it's easy to add images and it pulls from our design guide. I can add links and text really easily. Everything is all in one place. Once I have these columns in place, that's when I start filling it out. And for now, I'm just going to do a really simple example. So this one is something that actually happened inside our application and I found it when I was testing it. I'm just not going to include any screenshots or links or anything like that for privacy issues. So the issue that we had was that there wasn't an icon showing up in the thumbnail. I included a screenshot and a link to the URL that this happened at and I included the version number. And in this case, it was version 1.00. So I know this is a lot of information to include about where to find this particular issue, but if a dev can't find it, then they're not going to do it. And I know this because I used to be a dev and I promise you, if we can't reproduce it, we're not actually going to do it. There are plenty of other bugs or fixes or features that we need to do in the meantime that we can find. Since this isn't too complicated, our description is pretty short. For the heuristics, I'm only going to include consistency. For my recommendation, we add in an icon. It's really not that hard. Um, <laughs> and then finally is a risk. There's very little risk to it. It just might look a little bit confusing for our users. And finally, our priority level is pretty low. This isn't anything that's going to break the system. And that's really how I do this audit. And I'm just going to spend the rest of the day filling this out and finding as many of these issues as I possibly can. So today is finally Friday, which is great because I I am so done. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm ready for my vacation to start. There's not a lot I have to do today. Pretty much just finish up my timesheets and probably chat with my coworkers. A lot of them are already taking a shorter day today, so there's not really anyone left around, especially since most people work two hours ahead of me in a different time zone. So yeah, I guess that's kind of my video for my week in the life of a UX designer. I'm really happy that I was able to show you guys what I thought was going to be a slower week, but kind of just ended up being like any other week. But I really hope that you guys like this video. I really like filming these because I feel like it kind of helps break that illusion of a UX designer just making designs and being in Figma all day. A lot of it is really just going to meetings, fixing up documentation and helping to solve problems and teaming up with your devs. So I'm really happy that I was able to show you guys a little bit of what my week looks like as a UX designer. But yeah, I think that takes us to the very end of the video. Thank you guys as always for watching. Um, yeah, I never know how to end these. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.